this is Control Structure, episode 101 and 11, <laughs> 111, for June 29th, 2016. Big week to everyone listening. This show has notes. Visit thenexus.tv slash cs111 to see them. I'm Stephen Orvis, and with me is the other host, Andrew Bailey. One, one, one. I think that's what I was trying to say. <laughs> it's just kind of <laughs> all over my tongue. Okay. So, um, yeah, things happened, as usual. Um, well, at least fewer things happened, uh, because, like, Independence Day is coming up, and, like, people are, like, going all out and, like, running around with chickens with their heads cut off, because it's summer. So it sounds like it's a big time for marketing and lots of customers with websites that want them fixed and promo codes. Um, well... Not really, but you'd think that uh, because, you know, it's summer, people would really want to start to, you know, be doing things for, like, I don't know, Black Friday. But that really hasn't happened. At least, like, from where I've worked, like, no one really gets too excited about Christmas in the summer. Because there's still enough time left that three tellers are procrastinating? Yeah, something like that. Okay. And then, like, the grill company comes to us at, at the beginning of November and wants their homepage redone. So we all get free grills. Nice. <laughs> it's a very good grill. It is. So, uh, you know, just had some burgers and casserole. So, yeah. Quite uh, good. So, uh, yeah. It, yeah, it was uh, Saturday that uh, I went to the GFS and I got a few things. And so I'm at the, uh, the spice rack and I'm like, you know, Cajun spice sounds pretty good. So I got it. And when I came home, I was kind of despaired because I already had one. So now I have two things of Cajun spice. So, you know, calm down on that. I just like need to use that a lot now. So that, that goes back to my idea once of having some sort of an app service thing where you'd go to the grocery store and be like, do I have such and such? And you'd be like, yeah, you do. Don't buy it. You already have it. It's going to expire in a year. You're good. Stuff like that. Or, yeah, you know, like spices, they'll keep for a while. They, they do keep for a while. So, so what is GFS, Giant Food Store? Uh, Gordon Food Service. Gordon Food Service. Okay. Uh, the best way I can describe it, it's, it is the Aldi version of Costco. Okay. So, you know, it's, it's kind of smaller, maybe a little cheaper, definitely no membership fees. Okay. Uh, and with the added twist of, like, a lot of restaurants stock food from there. So, like, you go in and, like, you know, those baskets, like, those plastic baskets that, you know... Uh, like generally, like burgers and fries come in. Um. Oh, yes, yes. They have like okay, little plastic glasses. Yes. Yeah, yes. they they have those. Aha. So uh, they probably is also where you get your giant giant bottles of ketchup from. Yes, I'm thinking. And okay. the giant jars of green olives. Um, let's see. Yeah, I also have a package of uh, forty hot dogs. Uh, but when I left. I was sad because I didn't buy any uh, hot dog buns. Well, the the hot dogs you can freeze, but the buns... I guess you can freeze buns, too. Yeah. 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 The hamburger buns that you had, I froze. Frozen bread actually can work out good. It's just the unthawing them. You have to be careful not to make them soggy and, and wet. Yeah. Um, so, uh, let's see. Oh, also on Saturday... Um, uh, I swung down by, by church, and uh, then when I was on my way back, I had to stop at an Ace Hardware store to pick up some pellets for uh, said free grill. And then I'm like, wait, the Panera Bread is, like, across the street. Want to bet that Chris is working there not right now? <laughs> so you went over to uh, bother Chris? Yes. So, you know, when he's in there doing his thing, he sort of looks like a barista. Barista. You know, like standing in front of the coffee machines, you know, like, you know, or like maybe it was tea or something. Okay. Like pouring water and stuff into yeah. like these containers. So I just like walked up to the counter there 
and waited for a few seconds, then said, You know how easy it is to stand behind you? (laughs) (laughs) And I'm pretty sure he didn't recognize who I was at first. (laughs) Because he just kind of like went like... (laughs) What was that? (laughs) So uh, I stopped in there also to go to the restroom. And then like I uh, ordered a, a cinnamon roll. And then like I asked the girl who was, uh, you know, getting it, I asked, does Chris need to be bothered right now? Or, or no, I, I prefaced it actually. You know, I wouldn't ask anyone, but does he need to be annoyed right now? And she just kind of looked at me funny. (laughs) And then another girl walked by and she said, yes, yes, he does. (laughs) (laughs) So that is when you went and stood behind him? No, that was actually after. Okay. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I want to say that was the highlight of his day until he decided to come over. (laughs) Okay. So, but, uh, yeah, that, that was great. Um, so yeah, what, what have you been doing? So I've been uh, back to, back to doing some more blacksmithing. I made a triangle bell, which you see, you know, like you see in the cowboy movies, they bring it and or, or like in uh, orchestras, like it's just this wire that is in a yeah, triangle. Yeah, except for mine is a little bit bigger in orchestra one, but yeah, something like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that that concept. So yeah. And then and then you take like a a metal rod and then you go. Ding! Yeah, exactly. So it, it actually does ring. The bell thing itself is made out of an entire railroad spike that I draw out. To about that long, <laughs> put points on the end. And the and ends. by that long, you mean what? Six feet? Uh, Outstretched like, arms? <laughs> well, I don't know. What is that? That's, that that might that's, be six feet. Uh, maybe not quite six. Something like that. So we'd go with four feet. And go yeah, four at, feet. at least four. Okay, four feet. So yeah, that was uh, lots of fun. I got my burns and my calluses and blisters and all of that from that. And sunburn too. It was hot on Saturday. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've Just as my policy, when I go out on bike rides... I uh, apply sunscreen beforehand. See, I, I should have, but I didn't have. Well, once once you do it a few times a week, yeah, it it just comes naturally. And also, because I don't want to get mad, I will also apply some mosquito spray. Mm, that is always a good thing. Yeah, so remember that time when I broke down on the trail? What? No. Yeah, uh, at least when my bike broke down. Okay. And like the... A uh, chain got kind of messed up. Okay. Um, like, I was standing in, like, a sort of wooded area for, I want to say, at least an hour. I must have had, like, five mosquito bites. They can really hurt. And I'm like, I'm not going to deal with this anymore. And I bought two uh, spray bottles of mosquito spray. One to keep here and one to put in my backpack. That's a good idea, having the backpack. Yeah. So, Yeah. Like, I really haven't been bit again. You know, if you keep moving, you're okay. But if you stand still, especially in a wooded area, you are mosquito food. I've noticed that if you're moving, it, it does it does make a difference. Yeah, it's just because, like, they kind of fly slow, so they can't really catch up to you. Buzz by them and be like, what was that? Well, uh, usually when I ride through a wooded area, like, you know those bugs that sort of, like, I should say, like, sort of buzz, but in, like, a single area of space. Like, you can sort of see them in the light. They're just, like, buzzing all around each other. Like the noceums? I'm not sure what they're called. They're, like... They're, like, like really small Like a gnat? Flies. Yeah. 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 Like, there'll be, I don't know, dozens of them just flying around each other. And then, like, I'll just, like, fly through. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> you know... Well, no pun intended. I just, you know, go straight through them. And, you know, I might feel, like, a few taps on me. And, like, especially, like, on my arm hair. They seem to like my arm hair. Because, like, I can look down and, like, there'll be, like, 15 of these, like, in my arm hair. That's that's what I got on Google when I typed in no seums was all this. Mosquitoes. Just, like, really smallish ones, though. The Wikipedia article calls it a Surta Opagonida. 
or biting midges. About one to four millimeters long. Huh. Known as snowsiums, midges, samflies, punkies. <laughs> I've never heard of all the other ones before. Huh. Well, put that in the uh, show docs. So, I guess in the banter. Andrew. Okay, yes, yes, it's a banter thing. Andrew. Andrew likes to scare no see ums by running over them with his bike. Running through them anyway. Through them. And and by uh, scare, you mean slaughter. Slaughter. <laughs> uh, up, up parentheses, maybe. <laughs> Raspberry? 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 Raspberry! <laughs> I started off loud. I was like, if I go any louder, Andrew's neighbors will come over. Actually, and... I think that they're moving out. Oh, okay. Ra- Wait, they're moving out? I thought you said they're- I thought you didn't say they're gone, and that was going to be really loud. Okay, we'll let them be in peace. <laughs> then we'll do one with after they move. It's really <laughs> loud. Okay. So, anyways, uh, seems that maybe... Android will be coming to Raspberry Pi. Uh, it's not a definitive thing, but apparently there is a branch created on the Android repository called Raspberry Pi, and the owner or someone associated with the Raspberry Pi was saying that it would be a good thing, but that they don't have resources personally to working on the project. So it seems like an open source effort, but it seems to make sense because you have your Bluetooth there, you have your Wi-Fi, uh, and of course, the Raspberry Pi is built off of a mobile processor, anyways. Yeah. Uh, so you know, with the ARM chip and whatnot. Yeah. So it seems like a, a really good fit. And the point of the article, they said that uh, there's you know, what? Me- were they saying millions of how many apps do they say that there are for Android? Anyways, there's a lot of apps for Android. Yeah. And so the point is, suddenly, if you can just download all these awesome apps to make your Android do your Android Pi do new cool things that could change how you use a Raspberry Pi uh, instead of more command line orientated UI I, I could see having the App Store and downloading things to the App Store like say the LED flasher program famous things like that I could see a lot of good things coming so yeah interesting idea and maybe even a Raspberry Pi phone um, well you know Windows uh, apparently is running on Pi now also uh, you would be referring to the like Windows 10, uh, yeah, like IoT. Yeah, yeah. You know, I kind of forgot. I was like, what exactly is it called? But I know like some version of Windows runs, yeah. you know, or is supposed to run on a Raspberry. I looked at it. I was like all excited about it, and then I realized it actually seems kind of lame. It just is like a command line thing that you plug into, and like, okay. If I wanted a command line, I would use Linux, since it kind of works great at command line. It's like the most powerful thing for command line stuff, and it works. People know how to use it. There's you Google things. Things come up. It's not brand new. There's software for it, and you want me to use something that Windows made that no one knows how to use. There's <laughs> probably no software for and who knows how much instructions are out there. Okay. Thanks, Windows, for making something useless. <laughs> So, uh, hey, speaking of uh, Windows and Microsoft and whatnot, something that may be far more relevant to you is uh, .NET Core. Uh, As of the day of recording, uh, this is, like, almost brand new. Uh, So uh, Windows .NET Core version 1.0 has released. So it seems that this runs on Mac and Linux. Oh, and it runs on Windows, too. But uh, obviously, it, uh, obviously, unfortunately. So, but uh, so, uh, like I was asking you uh, earlier, that .NET Core seems like there's like parts of .NET, like some APIs or features or something that is not included in this that is included in like the other, uh, you know, big 
uh, .NET framework. Yes, they they alluded to that in the uh, in the blog post that it's it is a more of a subset, but it's growing through time. Uh, lots of community contributions they pointed out, uh, but some things like in the .NET, such as WCF, which currently has uh, base in DirectX, uh, it uh, is not going to be supported just because it has dependencies. But it sounds like they're trying to make a decently close uh, equivalent, and so they're saying that there's some issues with porting over an application, uh, but you might have to change namespaces and usings, maybe you're missing a couple methods here and there, but it sounded like they're heading towards a more complete solution. Uh, supposedly the performance, they're claiming to get like a 10x performance on certain servers and machines and stuff, and it, I I was wondering if it's like because it ran on Linux or what, but it sounds like from what I was understanding, it sounds like they've just built a cleaner, faster, leaner, meaner framework that's more efficient is the impression I get. With... So. Uh with the contributions from thousands of people. Yes, I believe they said, uh, I want to I want to say it was something like uh, 9K developers, 10K, something like that contribution. And by K, had, you mean thousand. Thousand, yes. Which uh, they said that they were surprised at how many, yeah, it says nearly 10K developers. So they said that they were surprised at how m- many people in the community had jumped on and helped them. So apparently Microsoft is discovering the whole open source thing. is actually kind of cool having 10,000 developers working for you for free. As so long as they get something out of it. As long as they get something out of it, which you know, is the implication. Like, I fix this, the bug doesn't happen anymore. So that can be and, a good move. And, oh yeah, I can like use all this other code too. Yes, that, that's that's a good driving thing. I'm just thinking about, like, say... Uh, the uh, blanking on it now. The the log in in log the logging framework. Uh, we had a bug that we hit at work on that one, and, and well, we needed to fix it, so we spent some time coding, uh, and figured out a solution for it, and then was able to submit that as well to in uh, log, so they got the benefit of the fix, and hopefully we get the benefit of having it, our fix baked do their code at some point in time, so it gets supported. So that's the power of open source for you there. Microsoft, uh, oh, the d- documentation too. I was a little yeah. impressed with it. The old MSDN is kind of hard to use sometimes, and I don't know. It's, it's, sometimes it's okay, but it's not the well, best. Didn't, didn't they redesign it in the past year? It is better than it used to be, I, w- I would say that. But uh, I like their documentation for the core docs. It, it looks a lot cleaner and leaner, and I was looking, uh, it looks like they have a search as you type feature on the page, and just uh, kind of looked, reminded you of like, some cool open source project that has like a new streamline website and everything. Which it, it kind looked, of it, is. It kind of is. So I think they've done a good job at at tapping into like the attitudes and the 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 cool side of the internet instead of just being Microsoft. Yeah. Microsoft is the new Google, et cetera, et cetera. Exactly. So this is uh, kind of uh uh, interesting from uh, my point of view. Uh, C file, a cloud storage service, was picked on by PayPal. Uh, PayPal wanted C file to monitor its users' files for illegal content, which, because they're like based out of Germany, that is a huge no no. So they refused, and PayPal suspended their account just as they threatened to do. Uh, so C file made a blog post about it. PayPal finally came to their senses, but C-File is never going to use PayPal again. Not after this. So, you know, this is not just like a, you know, uh, how to say, you know, C-File, you know, sort of ignored them. Like, they actually, you know, went through and explained to them, this is what we do. And apparently some people at PayPal used C-File, but apparently that didn't really matter. And, uh, like... It seemed like, you know, the, PayPal understood that this was sort of a misunderstanding, but then the next day they're like, yeah, the uh, previous uh, uh, assertion stands and you need to do this or we're going to cut you off. So uh, they cut them off. So, like, I'm not sure if it's still uh, this way, but C file is like, okay, free services for everyone until we, like, get a new payment processor. Wonder if uh, they were accepting new signups. 
Uh, I suppose so. Um, so, you know, uh, they wrote a, this blog post and it got a lot of traction. Uh, like, I remember, you know, reading this long before this update was on there. And, uh, you know, then I guess the moral of the story is, you know, PayPal apologized uh, to C file for making for uh, making a blog post that damages PayPal's brand. Wait, C file p- apologized? No, PayPal apologized because C file wrote a blog oh, post to damage their brand or something. Because apparently this request came from the PayPal brand management team or something. Because like apparently PayPal does not want to be associated with like terrorism and child uh, pornography oh, and like other bad things. Okay. So, um like this is this is not exactly the first time that PayPal has uh, you know, been irrational. Yeah, I think they kind of have a reputation for being uber careful like even I think technically per policy you're not supposed to use their services to say buy a gun that per policy you're not supposed to do that, which is it's like, okay, buying a gun isn't illegal, except for if you do it Ill- legally. There are legal ways to buy guns, but yeah. anyways, that's PayPal for you. So yeah, I think this they've done well uh, uh, going back at PayPal, standing their ground against them. Yeah. And for that, obviously, as you said, they've had huge, huge public support, and uh, I bet they're beyond uprise no matter that they so. don't use PayPal. I think people will be happy with that. And like a lot of other... Uh... Uh, organizations have picked up this uh, uh, this story as well. So Fortune has, you know, did an interview with I think yeah the CEO, and you know just to get some background perspective on this. But yeah, I, I love the title of that Fortune article. Yeah, it restores the account of Dropbox rival. So it's like. Uh... They don't even mention the brand name. Yeah. It's almost like, because it's, I don't know if at that point in time it was unknown. And so they, if they said, if they if they would were to put uh, uh, C file in the name, maybe no one would ever click the link to read it. So they figure, oh, we'll put Dropbox in the name and then people will read it at least. Yeah, yeah that, that gets search engine traffic. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, like I started poking around here and apparently they have a self-hosted version so, uh, and I think that, uh, like, their system is all set up so it encrypts files client-side so the server doesn't know what the file content is. That makes it pretty cool, then. So then your your uh, server would be automatically encrypted by default and everything. That's That makes it pretty neat. Transmission of the files would be encrypted, too. Yeah, by just that virtue yeah. alone. So, and uh, also, apparently, they... Uh, have a version for Raspberry Pi. Nice. Yeah, so, you know, Linux and whatever, uh, you know, they have a free community edition, and then they have, like, a paid uh, corporate or enterprise edition or something. I like it when companies do that. They offer a good basic product that's, like, really awesome for free. And, like, by the way, if you like our free stuff, we have something a little bit better with these other features that are really awesome on it, too. I find that those companies often make a really good product, and then the other things you see around the product is like, yeah, that's adding value to what you're giving me already, and I find that it's very valuable what I already have. Almost like the Sherber concept, kind of a bit like that. Let's see, it wasn't uh, this past Sunday, but it was the Sunday before that I decided to take the plunge and install Windows 10 on my desktop. So, uh, in doing so, I, uh, you know, you know, did the, you know, get do the uh, little upgrade thing that uh, gets pulled in by Windows Update. You know, I you know, went through that and it was preparing to download for like two hours. It wasn't doing anything. Like I looked at the uh, the network uh, monitor, and like I don't think even a gigabyte had been transferred, and the connection was pretty much idle. 
So I'm like, okay, this might be a little bit of a problem. So I'm like, okay, uh, it might need Windows to be fully updated first before it tries. So I did that, and the Windows update was stuck for like 30 minutes, not doing anything. So I'm like, okay, uh, how do I get this moving forward? So I found a post that said to go into the C Windows directory and delete this one cache directory for uh, Windows update, then run this command to reset it, and tried that, still nothing. So I eventually gave up, and apparently there's a tool that you know downloads and installs Windows 10 you know on its own. Mm -hmm. So I did that, and even though it seemed to be stuck at 99% installing for like at least an hour and a half, it eventually finished and like finished up everything and you know finally was able to get in at about like I don't know like a quarter after 11. <laughs> so the first thing I noticed is that my second monitor wasn't coming up. So uh, that told me it was like oh there's like a graphic driver issue which meant that I also had no sound because uh, I have a 7.1 surround sound receiver that needs to get sound through the HDMI port, which is like pretty much the only way to get 7.1 sound out of a PC right now, unless you do like USB. Uh, so, uh, you know, I had to get a second monitor so that the sound could go over that through the receiver to uh, one of my monitors. Uh, so that wasn't working. Another thing is, is that the Ethernet NIC was misreporting the plugged in status of the cable. So it was plugged in, but it was reporting that it was not plugged in. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I unplug the Ethernet cable from the back. The NIC activates <laughs> and Windows says that it can't find the network. Huh, we're just having trouble finding anybody. Well, no kidding. The cable's right here. <laughs> So I plug it back in, and it says that the cable is now unplugged. Nice. So uh, if you recall, I have this little USB 3 hub with yes. the Gigabit Ethernet jack on it. So I was I plugged that in, and I updated my uh, graphics drivers. So I had internet sound, and uh, so but I'm like you know I'm using this hub which I you know originally intended for my laptop. So, like, I need to fix this still. So, at some point on Monday, I'm like, okay, uh, why don't you go home and, uh, you know, look for updated Ethernet drivers. So, I went on the MSI website and, you know, I was like, oh, yeah, like, there's Ethernet drivers here. And, oh, there's a BIOS update. Might as well do that too, right? So, um, you know, I did all that and I bricked my motherboard. <laughs> so did the BIOS update come from Microsoft then? It came from MSI. Okay. The uh, board manufacturer. Okay. So, you know, it was like a Windows utility and whatnot. So, you know, you know, how should I say this? You know, pretty much your motherboard manufacturer should be the one to update your BIOS. So, uh, you know, I went through that and, you know, came around for a reboot and it's not rebooting. <laughs> you know, like the fan, the fans and the light would blink for like half a second, then turn off. And then a few seconds later, it would do the same thing again. I'm like, uh oh. So, uh, you know, I think I uh, took out the graphics card and like some of the RAM, and it was still doing the same thing. And I'm like, oh crap. So I hurried on to Amazon and uh, bought a. Uh, uh, I think it was actually an Ivy Bridge motherboard uh, because apparently the Ivy Bridge era motherboards uh, are also compatible compatible with Sandy Bridge CPUs, which is like the generation older. Okay. So uh, I now have that. And I also got this, which is a, this is going to be a live uh, unboxing on the podcast. You get the beautiful sound of the cardboard being ripped. Which is a Seagate 4 terabyte hard drive. Nice. So, let's see if I can get the model number. It's the, uh, the uh, model that, uh, whatchamacallit, 
uh, backblaze. Back yes. So it's like the ST four thousand DM zero zero zero. So yes, I intend to uh, swap out the hard drive uh, on this desktop up here. Uh, so instead of having six hundred forty gigabytes, I will have four thousand. There you go. And I'm not sure what I'll be doing with that. It'll it might end up uh, with the uh, motherboard in the server downstairs. Uh, so, uh, but the replacement motherboard came Thursday. So, uh, Wednesday I had, like, completely dis disassembled everything, got the, uh, goop off of my CPU uh -huh. and heat sink and, you know, pretty much, you know, ready to go, you know, whenever it comes. So, uh, uh, you know, it came, put it back in, and apparently this board has a USB 3.0 header. Uh, so for, like, uh, front panel ports, which my case has, but I have been unable to use because my old board did not have the... Okay. Uh, and apparently they're not backwards compatible because, like, not only are there more pins in the USB 3.0, they're also spaced much smaller. So they purposely made them so you cannot plug the one into the other. Which, you know, it's USB 2.0... You know, there's, like, a lot of those. Yeah. Uh, my keyboard has a USB 3 hub already in it. So, mm. you know, I'm I'm totally cool with, you know, my uh, count, my population of USB 3 ports. Um, so, yeah. Let's see uh, something else from that. But, uh, oh, yeah. Like, I put the motherboard in, and I, as of yet, have not installed any drivers for it. So I'm not sure if they're, like, integrated in with Windows or what. See, when I ins did the uh, install on my desktop of Windows 10, at first when it came up, it only had one monitor on, like, it didn't have graphics drivers, and it popped on the internet. And it's, like, three, four minutes later, suddenly, so bam, the other monitor turns on, I look down on the taskbar, and it's got, like, the AMD Catalyst running. <laughs> so apparently Microsoft is like, oh! Oh, you're missing drivers. Let me go get them for you, which I guess was nice of them to install it without asking. <laughs> so, hey, uh, speaking with uh, speaking about Microsoft doing things without asking, um, uh, apparently someone has sued Microsoft for ten thousand dollars because the Windows 10 update broke her laptop. So, uh, you know, like they're you know as always, you know, moving through Windows versions, you know, some drivers will not work. Uh, so apparently, I guess, like, her Wi-Fi didn't work and, like, maybe some other things. Uh, but, like, the way that Microsoft keeps forcing this update on people, you know, is, I don't know, kind of a dark pattern, I think. It's very annoying that I found that as time has gone on, the, their call to update to Windows 10 has become louder and louder and more and more forceful, even to the point where we're ready to go. You just tell us when and we'll do it. How about tonight at midnight? We can do this. We got this. So um, I understand why they're doing this. You know, it's you know, supposedly more secure. Uh, you know, they want people to be on, you know, one version of Windows. Uh, so... Like everything gets a little bit easier for them and it, and for everyone else, uh, and like they want to make it loud so people won't miss it. Um, so you know, I guess in response to this, that uh, you know, Microsoft is toning it down a little bit. Uh, like apparently, it will uh, schedule uh, the update for you, and like if you click the uh, little X in the corner, uh -huh. it will not cancel it. And, like, there's, like, no obvious cancel button on this dialogue. Yes. So, apparently, they've changed that. And, you know, uh, you know, there is now uh, a option to decline free offer. Which is, which is good. Like, that should have been there from the start. They should have had a decline offer because, you know what? Some people might not want it. Yeah. And, like, some people might have software they paid thousands of dollars for that will not work under Windows 10. Yep. So, um, although, ironically, if you're paying thousands of dollars for it, they should probably get on their, you know, get on with the times by now. Perhaps. So, uh, you know, you know, granted, you know, the decline offer should be there, 
but it should be easy to, okay, I'm actually ready now. Yeah, I, I, I would be okay with that. It's like decline it, but it's, you still have an w- easy way to still jump on the boat when you want to. Like, you know, maybe putting it in the start menu or something. Yeah, that's a reasonable place to put it. I'll click it if I want to click it. So, and, uh, oh, something that I neglected to mention is that, uh, you know, while I was poking around uh, Amazon, uh, that I noticed that it seems to be all HTTPS by now. So, you know, I, you actually saw it. I, you know, punched in HTTP specifically. Yes. And I opened up the, uh, the network analyzer and you could see it does purposefully go to HTTPS. Yes, you asked it for HTTP, and it's like, oh, hey, do you want HTTPS? Here you go. <laughs> so, yeah, that's good. Uh, it's been a long time in coming. So uh, if you would like to uh, submit feedback for this show, you can do so on the nexus.tv. If you're looking at the show notes right now, you can go ahead and click the link right over there to uh, send us feedback. And do not forget that today is International Backup Awareness Day. Because I just got a four terabyte hard drive, <laughs> and I'm going to clone my smaller drive onto it. Sounds like a plan. So, and then maybe eventually I'll set up uh, encryption on everything, uh, but I'm not sure. I might want to want to install Windows 10 from scratch. Might be good. So this is the upgrade that you did right now, then. Yes. Yeah. So like, I just want to you know clear things out, uh, but I don't know. I might want to wait until. Like, maybe I upgrade the whole thing before I do that. So, you know, thankfully, I uh, I don't think I had to, uh, like, re-register Windows or, like, you know, maybe not register, but activate uh, Windows. Uh, because I remember, like, specifically clicking the option after I got the new board, uh, but it did not complain at all. Specifically cl- clicking the option to do what after you got to the new board? To activate Windows. Okay. It it seemed when I, like I said, I got that copy of Windows 7 off of eBay from some guy in Britain that apparently is throwing out old Windows 7 machines. Anyways, when I ran that, I, I did the install first because I didn't have the key yet. And then later on, I went in, entered the key, clicked activate. It was like, okay, we're good. <laughs> so uh, no problems when, when I activated mine. So uh, then, uh, let's see. And if I do upgrade and then it has a problem with the activation... It's like, hey, you. We need you to call us. I'll just say my motherboard broke. Yep. <laughs> In my experience, when any time I've ever called Microsoft about activation, I think I only ever talked to a person once. I think all the other times it was just the machine, and you just type in the codes, and it always works. Beep. <laughs> so, um, as of that, uh, let's see. Next weekend is going to be like Independence Day weekend. So I'll be going over to my parents, which for the first time in many, many months. Very nice. So um, I've successfully convinced both of my parents to buy bicycle pants. <laughs> so you're all, as a family, going to go riding through town with bicycle pants? Uh, there's actually a very nice trail okay. uh, back. It's actually more going through the county, actually. But, uh, you know, I think it's because... Both myself and my aunt uh, uh, are telling my mom about how much we've been bicycle riding that she's like, oh, I guess I have to catch up too. And then I told my brother about it and he's like, yeah, I got you both beat. <laughs> so apparently he's been riding as well? Um, like he he works for like some delivery service. It's sort of like, uh, like Uber or something. Okay. That, you know, like, people will, like, order things, and he'll go out and get them and deliver them so, on his bike. Okay, so he apparently rides all day on his bike. Um, I think he does that as, like, a second job, and I think he, like, just rides back and forth to work or something. Okay. But, yeah, uh, he apparently rides a lot. Sounds like a good, useful way, uh, way to exercise and get paid for it. Yeah. So, uh, but he's been doing that for, like, years and he specifically started that to get money to go to Berlin. <laughs> Which he has not done. So I guess he still likes it. So uh, let's see. So we'll go renew that. And then, yeah, we'll have like a cookout and everything. But uh, apparently I'm going to be having steak instead of burgers, which is nice. 
You've probably been having so many burgers now that it's not quite as special as it used to be. Yeah. So, plus I have, like, so many hot dogs and, you know, like, tater tot casserole. So... So, have you, have you uh, taken your tater tot casserole back to your parents yet to let them try? Uh, I actually made some when they helped me move in here. Okay. Was it a good reaction? Yeah. Yeah? So, uh, even though, like, it really didn't have that much cheese in it, because, like, I, you know... Uh, I guess I didn't, like, grab cheese, uh, like, before I moved. But then, like, we went to the, uh, like, the shop and save uh-huh. around here. And, you know, we got, you know, like, meat. And it's like, oh, we get cheese. So, like, it was already on the grill. So, like, I just opened it up, sprinkled some cheese in there. Yeah. <laughs> like, even, like, on the top. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah. Uh, how about you? Uh, well, next week I'm actually on vacation. I'm going to uh, camp up in Slippery Rock with my family for the week. So, enjoying that. Uh, they normally have people come in and do fireworks sometime in the week that are pretty good. So, looking forward to that. And, uh, yeah, so that's pretty much what I have planned. So, uh, oh yeah, I almost forgot to mention that uh, the last episode of uh, A Prairie Home Companion with uh, Garrison Keeler, because... Apparently, this next episode, he will be retiring. And uh, it's a very funny uh, radio show. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, our network originators up in Minnesota may or may not be familiar with this. But, yeah, it's pretty much the reason why Minnesota exists. (laughs) But uh, um, aside from that, uh, happy birthday, America. So uh, have a good one. You too. Has your family tried a buttermilk? Has your family tried a buttermilk? If your family's tried them all, you know you're satisfied and then the real how 